So today what, what usually happens when you want to open an account is that the applicant will complete an application um, and present a driver's license. The application will be matched with the driver's license. Um, the, the clerk at the bank would validate that the cardholder is the person, um, manually validate the name, the, the social security number, so on and so forth. Um, it's not a great experience. I think I've had three or four um, of these interactions where you're sitting for about 15, 20 minutes going through every single line item just to make sure that everything is, is, is correct. Um, and then in some cases, this, this is performed remotely where you take a selfie, then you take a picture of the driver's license, then you take a picture of the back of the driver's license. Um, and it's not quite as secure as having a, a, um, a cryptographically authenticated uh, driver's license. Next slide, please. So how, how this could work with, with an MDL. Um, the applicant would complete the application, similar to to, uh, to how they would do it otherwise. But then the uh, the MDL holder would tap the MDL against a reader, uh, which could cross-verify that information. So rather than me saying my name is Andrea C by writing that in in, in handwriting, and then um, the clerk validating the uh, the information that the spelling is the same way, this could all be done automatically in the background. Um, naturally, the bank would have to validate that the presenter is indeed who he or she claims they are, but um, that that goes back to what David was mentioning about how, how do you perform that, that validation. Now, more importantly, in day two, this could be done remotely. Um, so a cardholder or a, an applicant could, rather than rely on taking a picture of, a, of a, an ID, you could, you could now cryptographically have, uh, ensure that this this mobile driver's license is legitimate. Um, so again, this this solves for um, s sort of the, the the potential typos. If I write my name Andrew Abai, that um, this could be validated like electronically against the the, the MDL. Um, and likewise, the, the the clerk, the bank clerk, would not need to to validate. Okay, does it does it, uh, well, my last name is fairly uh, unique in this country, most countries. Um, is it spelled with A-A-B-Y-E or is it A-B-B-Y-E? Um, so you, you have this, this uh, digital, digitalization of it. Um, additionally, the, the clerk is not required to assess the authenticity of the license. So in particular, I now have a cryptographic binding um, from the, the issuing authority down to the driver's license itself that, uh, that gives a stronger binding than, than, than validating it, quote unquote, manually. And by the way, this is a very similar thing for the, the retail use case, as in now you know you can trust this particular device as opposed to a driver's license from, from um, an analog driver's license. And then again, that day two would allow remote opening um, with with a stronger, much stronger sense of authenticity. You can do machine learning, you can do kind of validation of the analog features, but but making it digital is is a um, is an improved experience or improved authenticity. Next slide, please. So, what does the bank need? Well, it needs the, an insurance that the identity validation. And, and the security around it is sufficient for KYC. If I can come in with a with a um, fake driver's license, that is bad. If I can get a fake driver's license or spoof a driver's license, that's not very good either. Um, so so the banks would need that. Now, generally, this the identity validation will be performed by the DMVs, and the security is specified in the ISO standard. Um, so we, as a community, would need to 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 um, basically spread that gospel, so to speak. We also need readers that are easy to integrate into the experience, um, just because it it is you, you you can't you can't pull it from from one um, one experience to a completely different one uh, just to to allow this particular thing. And then lastly. Uh, banks would need the accurate updated information, in particular so 
things like address. Um, just because, again, when you're sitting and, and filling out your, your form, you write in your address, is there a typo, is everything correct? Once that is validated, well, we're, we, we are we're hopefully good, um, hoping that two people didn't make the same mistake. Um, and your driver's license today, analog, is, is updated once maybe every five years, so you do not get that updated information. Now, if you have that uh, digital, again, you can do that, that validation um, live. In case there is an, an issue or disconnect, then, then you can raise the flag. Um, so just to, to conclude, uh, before I hand it over to Paul, is a, a digital identity would, would allow banking staff to, to focus much more on the customer as opposed to, to the validation and the doing those 20 minutes uh, verification of information and all that stuff. Now, only only thing I will point out is naturally there will be some, some new things like in the, in the application, the social security number should uh, must be present in in an application that should not be retrievable by a general um, by a general um, reader just because well it is a social security number. 